So our next speaker is Louis Daquet. Uh, he is going to talk about the lysine acetyl transferase complex neo A4 regulates cellular phosphatidylase, inositol 4 phosphate, and phospholipid metabolism. Thanks. Okay. Welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak today and for everyone to waking up so early to listen to me talk. Uh, my name is Louis. I'm a graduate student at the University of Ottawa, uh, working under Kristen Bates' lab. And today I'll be talking about the work I've been do doing for the last couple of years, looking, or at least investigating the role of this lysine acetyl transferase complex on A4 on, on lipid metabolic pathways. <clears throat> um, so very briefly, lipids within the cells can rapidly remodel uh, in favor of producing either uh, phospholipids when they want to create more membranes, so when they're actively proliferating, or when they're under stress and they want to sort of create more neutral lipids or uh, inactive lipids, they'll tend to convert them into triacylglycerol or sterile esters and store them into lipid droplets. All these pathways are, are mediated through or phosphatidic acid, which is produced at the ER, and it acts not only as a metabolic intermediate to neutral lipids and phospholipids, but it also has signaling functions, uh, which I'll talk about later. <clears throat> but initially, we were actually interested in, in, in uh, the role of this lipid remodeling protein called SEC14. And SEC14 is a very interesting protein. Um, it's an essential, as well as a very conserved lipid binding protein. Um, and what it does, or its biological function, is to create a lipid environment at the Golgi, which promotes vesicle trafficking events. And it does this by promoting the, um, the kinases, such as PIK1, to produce PI4 phosphate, as well as inhibits the CDP choline pathway and restricts the, uh, the, the limitation of phosphatidic acid. <clears throat> so uh, SEC14 is a central protein, so if you delete the protein, the cells die, and we can use temperature-sensitive mutants to see this phenotype. And what happens under these conditions is that PI4P levels are reduced, whereas phosphatidylcholine levels are increased. And so what we were interested in is in finding out if there were any regulatory pathways uh, that's involved in the SEC14-dependent phospholipid metabolism. Now, our lab doesn't really look specifically at lipid metabolism. We're actually more interested in lysine acetylation as a regulator of all these different cellular processes. But we found evidence in the literature, as well as through my own work, that lysine acetylation was affecting uh, specific pathways dependent on SEC14. And actually, at the beginning of my master's, I did a couple of complementary screens looking at the effect of different mutants of lysine acetyl transferases and lysine deacetylases on conditions where we deplete the cells of, of SEC14 function. <clears throat> and what we came across quite often is that this NUA4 CAC complex, or at least its mutants, are very sensitive to conditions where we deplete the cells of SEC14 function. Now, NUA4 is also an interesting cat in yeast. It's highly conserved. It's composed of 13 different sub subunits. Its catalytic domain is actually essential for growth, and it's called EZA1. Another important protein of this complex is EF1, which is a structural component. However, unlike EZA1, EF1 deletes uh, can survive. <clears throat> so the first screen we did is we actually crossed different cat mutants and KDAC mutants with the SEC14TS strain to determine whether or not it would have an effect on its growth. And what we found consistently was that this NUA4 mutant EF1 delete actually at the semi-permissive temperature, uh, you know, it, it, it acquired a synthetic lethal phenotype. And this phenotype was consistent with other NUA4 mutants such as EF7 and this EZA1 TS strain, all of which create the synthetic lethal phenotype with SEC14 TS. Similarly, for my second screen, we looked at the effect of overexpressing OSH4. Um, OSH4 is actually fun functional antagonist of SEC14. So what happens when you overexpress OSH4 is that you activate the phosphatase SAC1 and deplete PI4P levels, which also creates a toxic effect to growth. And what I found was when I overexpressed OSH4 through doxycycline-induced for promoter, um, we found that NUA4 mutants also had this synthetic dosage lethality phenotype, uh, very similar to what we found when we were inactivated SEC14. So this led my interest into figuring out exactly why NUA4 is genetically interacting with SEC14 and its dependent pathways. 
And although I won't have time to show all the data today, I was able to show that NUA4 isn't directly impacting PI4P levels. In fact, what we found is that when we bypass SEC14's function by using its common suppressors, such as OSH4Delete and CKI1Delete, anyway, 4 mutants prevented the suppression of SEC14 essential function. <clears throat> this led us to, to look at really how NUA4 was impacting uh, the metabolism uh, of lipids. And given the fact that any number of these pathways could potentially affect SEC14 growth, we decided to look at uh, transcriptional analysis of, of NUA4 mutants, and looking specifically for genes which were misregulated and would have an effect on lipid metabolic pathways. So with the help of some collaborators, we did some RNA-seq work comparing the transcriptome of, of SEC14TS against SEC14EF1 delete under conditions where we, we, we inactivate SEC14 partially under these semi permissive temperatures, but only for a couple of hours. <clears throat> and within those data sets, we found a couple of different genes uh, involved in lipid metabolism which were misregulated. So we saw that NO1 was being overexpressed, whereas CDS1 was being downregulated. <clears throat> NO1 um, is a gene which is essential to create an all under conditions where it is in the nostril supplemented in the media. So it is the main catalytic enzyme which converts glucose into a nostril. Its um, <clears throat> transcription is actually dependent on a nostril in the media. So in normal YPD media or SC media, there's quite a lot of a nostril. And in a one expression is repressed due to the fact that phosphatic acid levels are, are fairly low and being converted into phosphatidylinositol as well as these other phospholipids. However, when we deplete the media of inositol, what happens is phosphatidic acid levels go up due to the fact that it's not being used to produce phospholipids. In fact, what's important to note is that under these conditions, we also see an increase in lipid droplet size uh, because uh, triacylglycerol and, and SC uh, metabolism is also being increased. So when PA levels are increased at the ER, this repressor called OP1 is actually, can actually bind to PA and is sequestered at the ER. And due to the fact that the repressor has now gone from the nucleus, we get this induction of the expression of not only NO1, but also a whole number of different phosphor uh, metabolic genes. <clears throat> so we found it strange that in our NOA formulas, we get an induction of INO1 expression. Um, so we want to know if that would have an effect on the growth of, of, of our SEC14TS strain on an inositol depleted media. So doing some dot assays, we looked at the growth of, of SEC14TS under conditions where we deplete inositol. And as you can see, we can get this, what we call an inositol oxytrophic phenotype. So under conditions where we deplete inositol, SEC14TS at these semi-permissive temperatures is incredibly sensitive to these conditions. Now, what was strange is that even though our NUA4 mutants actually overproduces NO1 and presumably also overproduces the nostal, we get actually an increase in this, uh, in this INO, INO negative phenotype, which led us to believe that NO1 derepression was actually an independent uh, or, or a secondary effect to some other lipid metabolic pathways which were being misregulated. And this led our attention to the expression of CDS1. And CDS1, we found, was, was significantly downregulated in our NUA4 mutant. CDS1 is the main uh, enzyme responsible for the conversion of phosphatidic acid into phospholipids. So the fact that we found it to be significantly downregulated is significant. And there's been considerable work on CDS1 done in, in, in recent uh, publications. And it shows that when we downregulate CDS1, you get an increase in phosphatidic acid levels, as well as an increase in lipid droplet size. And we would suspect that this would lead to the repression or the, the uh, sequestration of the OP1 uh, repressor to the ER, which would then induce NO1 expression. However, what was strange was that when we overexpress CDS1, we didn't get a suppression of the phenotype of the ONA4 mutants. Um, in fact, it made the growth of those mutants even worse. Um, so this led us to believe that CDS1 downregulation was really also just a secondary effect to something that ANA4 was impacting. <clears throat> so 
So this led us to look at whether or not it would have an effect on lipid droplet size. Uh, if CDS1 levels are being downregulated in EF1, we suspected that lipid droplet size would increase, or at least that was what we expected to happen, given the fact that an increase in phosphatic acid levels and, and DAG levels can actually have a toxic effect on growth. So it needs to be converted into these neutral lipids and stored in lipid droplets in order to survive those conditions. And in fact, what we saw was that even though we get this increase um, in, in lipid droplet size and, and, and formation in, in SEC14TS strains under inositol depleted conditions, our anyway formulas actually block this increase in lipid droplet formation. So this is using a, a lipid droplet stain, Bodipi, and we actually quantified this effect by measuring the mean integrated density of the stain within the cells, and you can actually see that, you know, under nostal depleted conditions, we usually get this induction of lipid droplet formation, but this is severely impaired in our anyway formulas. And we believe this is the reason why NUA4 is interacting with SEC14 is that it's preventing its ability to create lipid droplets. So in summary, um, I discovered a negative genetic interaction between SEC14 and NUA4 mutants. <clears throat> and this negative genetic interaction was, was mostly independent of, of known regulatory pathways of, uh, of SEC14, uh, which suggests that we found the novel pathways which regulate SEC14. Not only that, but we saw uh, misregulation of a couple of important lipid metabolic genes in our EF1 delete background, but didn't directly uh, account for the growth defects we found. And finally, we found that lipid droplet formation and presumably neutral lipid biosynthesis is, is impaired in RNA4 mutants, suggesting that RNA4 has an important role in lipid droplet formation under stress. So when we started off, we had really had no idea what NUA4 was doing in these pathways, and now we have this novel function for lysine acetyltransferase in the regulation of lipid droplet formation and neutral lipid biosynthesis. So with that, I'd like to thank my lab, Kristen Bates, um, also this former postdoc in our lab, Mike Kennedy, who was, who was a lot of help to me, and he mentored me through the early years, taught me to be a, a good scientist. As well, I'd like to thank our collaborators at the University of Ottawa, the Stinsey Lab, that did the RNA-seq work for us, as well as uh, Vitus Bankitis and Christopher McMaster, and all our funding at HCC as well. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful timing, Liz. Questions? Right here. So are you proposing... <clears throat> sorry. Uh, are you proposing that the new A4 is... A regulating gene expression, or is acetylating something else? Uh, we're not sure as of now. Uh, as you saw in our RNA-seq data, we do see misregulation of genes, but those don't directly account for, their, for the, uh, the genetic interaction with SEC14. Uh, we do have evidence that NUA4 is acetylating some proteins involved in fatty acid synthesis. Um, so we believe it's directly acetylating those proteins and affecting the metabolism of fatty acids, which leads to its defect in in triacylglycerol biosynthesis. I, I have one along this line. So, so you have, did you check histone modification levels? Because ESA1 is also a histone acetyltransferase and can impact particularly enzymes or genes that are falling to this. Yeah, um, we didn't look specifically at histone acetylation, although we have evidence that our mutants uh, downregulate histone acetylation, at least uh -huh. partially. Um, but uh, based on our, on our RE-seq data set, we didn't really see, other than those two genes, anything which would account, um, or any expression of those genes which would account for its genetic interactions. So we think really that its role is outside of the nucleus and, and is, has to do with acetylation of, of these metabolic genes outside. And you have not done the acetylome yet? Acetylome, no, we haven't done that yet. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah.